This episode of the Capital G Show has been brought to you by the world-renowned, extremely popular, and from what I've heard, extremely fun MOBA that is League of Legends. It's absolutely free to play, and I'll be trying it out myself. The link is in the description. What's up, YouTube? DN Dual Commentary. My opponent's rating is 1805. I am 1807. Uh, this is the second highest I've ever been ranked on DN. I think yesterday sometime I got up to like 1812 before I stopped playing. I think I was rated 11th, and then I played a couple of games today, lost a couple of games, won a couple of games. So, anyways, if I win this match, I should almost certainly be in the top 10 on Dual Link Network, which is crazy to think considering I think it was one month exactly ago. I posted a video talking about how bad I was and accepting the fact that I'm a scrub because, you know, I won one game off Bujins and then I was just making colossal misplays and losing and I just felt like I was just awful. So anyways, I feel like I've come a long way. So we've got Valor, MST, Duality, Turtle, Hair, and Tinky. I play the Tinky. He doesn't space typhoon it. So I'm just going to throw my Yamato out there. I'm never really scared to throw Yamato out there because if you bottomless, then it makes my Carnation live really, really quickly because you're going to draw Bujins uh, later in the game and they're going to go to the graveyard. And if you're warning, I'd much rather just get it out the way turn one. All right, so I do Audi for Hair, Valor, and Tinky. I take the Tinky because I've already got Valor and Hair both in my hand. Uh, two Valors get super cloggy, and during the end phase, I could ditch my Hair and get a Crane anyway, so I don't want two Hairs. Now, you guys might notice that I'm keeping MST in my hand during my end phase, and that's because, especially when you're playing against a deck you don't know with Bujins, it's much better to, to leave your Space Typhoons in your hand. Number one, if your opponent uh, uses something like Phoenix Chain during your end phase, you can uh, MST it. If you have the, the MST set, you can't do that. And the second is against Water. It's a much better move because when they play um, Spear, then you can MST that. Once again, if you have your MST set, what they will almost certainly do is they will go Lindy, and then they will uh, Pike, and then they will pop your MST, and you'll just be wrecked. All right, so I'm playing against Heretix. Um, he goes Tefnuit. Then he summons Nefteth, and now he's going to get Luster Dragon number two from his deck. So um, I know I'm going to be stirring down in the tomb, but I feel good because, um, let's see, I've got Hair in the Graveyard, I've got Baylor, and I have Bujani Crane. So uh, I pretty much got all the answers I need. He uh, detaches Nefteth as a material. I'm going to go ahead and affect Baylor that, and um, we're just going to kind of see what he does. Uh, I was hoping... Um, that he would go into Gaia Dragon and just, you know, like try to see or something like that. Now, me having one layer of protection, uh, that being hair, and knowing that my opponent is playing a really aggressive deck like Heratics, I feel like I can just attack and not have to worry about a deep prison. If he has Phoenix Chain, I'll MST it. So, anyways, uh, he doesn't have a response to my attack. I'm going into damage calculation. I want to get that a tomb off the field because he only has four cards. So, I mean, he'll be in really, really bad shape. If uh, I kill that thing, and again, I still have one layer of protection, and then during my end phase, I'll drop the turtle into the graveyard, and I'll get a second crane. So I'll have two layers of protection plus the uh, the the crane. So that's actually three layers of protection for my Yamato. Now during this end phase, um, he already proven he already proved to me that he didn't have a Phoenix Chain. So now I don't really concern myself with. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to set the uh, the MST, and I'm going to set the Royal Decree. I'm going to drop I'm gonna drop Turtle into the graveyard and I'm going to add hair. I thought about Mikazuki for a second. I don't know why I thought about that. And I was like, you know, he he's down on cards, but you know, he can still probably easy easily make a rank six. I mean all he has to do is have like two uh, convocation and then you know top deck any monster, any uh heretic ruler. So anyways, uh you see he just sets one and he passes turn. Um, I have MSC set and I've got decree set so uh, I'm just going to go in for battle. Uh, once again, if my opponent has multiple back rows and I haven't already decreed them, what I've been doing is I've just been trying to wait until my opponent activates one of the cards. Uh, the chances of them having two, you know, like sorry, uh, two uh, torrential one and e back or something like that are just so low. So, anyways, uh, I'm not going to attack into that back row. I'm just going to start making advantage. You know what I mean? There's, I'm, I'm basically going to out advantage him. There's no hurry. There's no rush. I've got so many layers of protection, so I'm going to drop Quaylen into the graveyard. So if he puts anything in front of me that I don't like, obviously I can pop it, and then I'm getting a uh, Booge Incarnation for free. Not to mention, once again, I have Crane. So right now, I'm just stacking my advantage. I mean, uh, this is one of the ways that Boojins win games is you just show that pa patience is a virtue. And in a Boojin deck, it really pays off because you just add more protection and more protection and more protection, and you just get free Booge Incarnations. So your opponent is only going, I mean, they're getting one card, essentially but I'm going like plus two every single turn and you can't attack me I've got so many layers of protection once again I'm not going to exceed 
all I'm going to do is I'm just gonna you know uh, pi duality I'm looking for I think I'm looking for like a lance or something like that yeah I, I feel good about that I'm gonna take the bear uh, Baylor I mean he he's proven that he really can't do much right now so Baylor and MST don't do anything now me having the decree right now I'm just gonna try and push in and I'm gonna see what he does if I would have got torrential I would have decreed and if he would have had something else I would have still felt good but anyways so I pop um, his dragon with the bear I attack in the mirror force uh, I obviously chain roll decree and he scoops it up I guess he didn't have any answers for that not to mention um, not only would I done a mess of damage to him but I would have been getting another I probably would have got a Mika off of that yeah so I would have been getting a free tanky alright so side decking time I'm going to side it in definitely um, my three max C's. Uh, what I found in in playing against this deck is uh, Lance does not help. Lance only is good against like Wing Dragon, Wing Beat card. So um, I'm gonna go ahead. I'm gonna side out one Kaiser. I don't like keeping in three Kaisers when I go second. I'm gonna side out one Decree. I don't like keeping in three Decrees. I'm gonna bring in a Mind Crush. Uh, Black Horn of Heaven is <laughs> is like one of the best cards in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now I, I I've completely come around to that card. All right, so we've got a pretty decent opening hand. He sets two, and we've got Yamato. Once again, I give no fucks about two back row. I'll summon straight into it. Uh, he has no response. I've got Double Veiler, I've got Crane, and I've got Mikizuki, so I have one layer of protection for my Yamato. Um, I thought about going straight for what's it called, for Turtle, because you know one of the ways that you can kind of wreck Bujins is you target them before they get set up, but then I've got, I got Veiler, so it's like, what's the big deal? I got Double Veiler on top of that. So you can see he plays Reckless Greed. Um, I guess he wanted to get the value of getting his card during his draw phase, but you see I'm going to roll Decree that. So um, I'm already, Royal Decree has paid for itself. And if he if he used Reckless Greed, he's probably in a bad position where he doesn't have the setup the way he wants it. So I feel really, really good. I'd feel better if um, if I had a Max C, but, you know, like, I'd, I'd trade in my Mikazuki for a Max C, definitely. So he summons Tefnuit, and what is he going to do? He's going to tribute Tefnuit for another Tefnuit, and I'm like, uh, that's great. <laughs> you can't pop my Royal Decree with Tefnuit, so, you know, I'm like, that's perfectly fine. Um, he brings out Luster Dragon from his deck, and he's going to go into a rank what? He goes into Heretic King Dragon of a Tomb, and I'm like, that's perfectly fine. He activates its effect by uh, discarding Tefnuit, and I'm going to effect failure that, of course. So... Once again, he's stunned. Now, if he doesn't run over Yamato, or if he doesn't try to run over Yamato, I'm going to drop Mikazuki. We're going to run that thing over, and we're going to search a bunch of di different cards. We're going to get a Carnation, and then we're probably going to dump a Turtle into the graveyard. But nope, he has an additional move. So now he throws down Tempest. He has no cards in his graveyard, so I'm like, okay, I'm fine with that. <clears throat> and then he goes into Gaia Dragon Thunder Charger, and I'm like, okay, wait. <laughs> I've got to use some of those protection cards now. So I'm going to eat 800 from the Tempest attack, and then we're going to crane the uh, Gaia Dragon. And, you know, granted, I guess he could summon Tempest again because of the, the cards he just sent with Gaia Dragon. I mean, he sent, uh, what, a dragon there. He sent um, the Gaia Dragon itself. So anyways, main phase two, he eats, uh, eats 1,200. He goes into Draco Sack, and he activates its effect. He gets a token, and I'm going to have to burn my second Veiler there, unfortunately. Um, I can't win without Yamato with this setup. So, uh, getting the Mikizuki on board not only means that I have an XC play, but in addition to that, it gives me the option of uh, getting my Bujin Carnation. So, there's no way in hell I could afford to let my Mikizuki die, or excuse me, to let my Yamato die. Um, I'm actually in a pretty good position right now here because uh, not only can I clear his tokens out, but with me having the MST, what I can do is I can set MST if he wants to play his trap. And he uh, tries to hit my decree, then obviously I can just MST it before decree goes to the graveyard. So you see, I'm sending hair to the graveyard. So I have protection against Dracosac if he targets my monsters, and then I get my carnation for free. So you see, he's going to get his two tokens, and his Dracosac has almost been used up now, and I basically survived the onslaught. And even though he has a bunch of dragon rulers in the graveyard, he doesn't have adequate cards to. To, to essentially use them like he doesn't have enough ways to summon them so I don't really need any cranes right now I mean my my guys are pretty much good so you see that's what he does he uh, tries to pop my back row but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna chain roll the Kree and the MS or I'm gonna chain my MST MST is gonna resolve so even if that was a reckless greed or something like that it wouldn't have resolved um, because the Kree would have still been face up on the field 
So now you see I'm in great position. Not only can I probably kill his token next turn, but I've got a free carnation in hand. Next turn, I should get another free carnation, and he can't summon his dragon. So um, even though I'm down in card advantage, huge advantage to me. <clears throat> so you see, he just sets one card and passes turn, and I have to look at my extra deck here. I'm thinking about potentially going into an XC play, and then I thought about it. I'm like, wait, there's there's way more advantage to be made than just leaving Mikazuki and Yamato on board. You know what I mean? That Draco sack, I don't give a fuck about that card. It can't pop any more things on my field. You know what I mean? Especially during my end phase when I put Turtle into the graveyard. I mean, I would at least get Turtle's effect. Actually, I would. I'd probably use Hair. Turtle's a little more valuable because Turtle stops shit like Big Eye. Turtle stops. Um, what is it? That 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 uh, Insector um, rank six motherfucker. All right. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna put. Um, I'm going to put uh, Turtle into the graveyard, and then I'm going to get my second Booj Incarnation. So I feel really, really, really good about my position, especially going against one back row. You know, if that was a light mirror or something like that, okay, yeah, maybe I wouldn't feel so great about my position then. But outside of that being a Soul Drain or a light mirror, I really couldn't care less what it is. It can be Reckless. It can be Solemn Warning. I still feel great about my position, especially with two Booj Incarnations and three layers of protection for both of my guys on field. Um, and it is a reckless greed. So uh, he has five cards, and I've got five cards. I feel like my cards are a little better than his. Now the fact that he had card card D kind of sucks because like he's getting he just basically went plus one, and then he sets two cards. So me drawing another Valor helped. Um, at this point, I'm really thinking about what I should do. Um, I go to exceed, and then I'm like, hold on, wait, 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 wait. wait. I'm like, all right, all right, all right. I don't, I'm not sure that I want to do that. So. Um, I know that I want to XC. I'm just not sure what XC I want to go into. I think Kagasuchi makes the most sense. I say that because I've got Baylor, right? So you can't target it because I've got Turtle. So if you try and big eye it, that takes out that. And then I have Baylor for, I mean, what? Else? Like, I guess he could go, he could use the Insector guy, but I'm going to Baylor that. And then one of the guys is going to get, what's it called? One of the guys is going to get hit with uh, Turtle, and then one of the guys is going to get hit with Baylor. So. Um, I milled five, and that was a fucking epic mill. I milled Crane. I think I milled um, Hair, and I milled Quailin. So, you know, me making my uh, my my Kagasuchi 2800 attack is just, I mean, it's the nuts. Because I don't think Dragoonity run anything, or Dragoonity. I don't think Heretics run much that can get over 2800. You know, I they might be able to make Star Eater, but, I mean, I give no fucks about Star Eater. Because all I would do is before, once he entered Battle Phase... Uh, before it attacked, I would just activate. Um, I would activate hair. It would survive, and then I would just pop it with Quailin. So, anyways, back to the duel. He summons Tefnuit. He tributes that for Sue. Uh, he gets Luster Dragon, so he's going into a rank six XC. And this is once again where decisions have to be made because he has to essentially find a way to target this guy twice. You know what I mean? If he targets it once, then um, it's it's not going to do anything. All right, so you see that he actually tributes his Sue for Nephthet, and he gets Flamevel Guard. Yeah, Flamevel Guard. Why, why did I say that? Like, I didn't know what that card was. Like, it wasn't played all through the Dragon Ruler format. Anyways, um, he's now going into a rank 6 XC. Um, he summons, I forget what that guy's name is, but I know he, he basically blows two cards up, and he's actually pretty good, I think. I, I don't think he can use his, I don't think he's a quick effect, but his defense is 2800, which is fucking real. But anyways, at this point, I'm just like, all right, well, what rank six is this guy going to go into? Because, you know, um, as long as my Kagasuchi lives this turn and I can clear two of his monsters um, during that turn, I feel like I'm going to win the duel because he'll essentially have ran out of cards that can kill Kagasuchi. Um, I mean, he only he only runs about three. You know, there's Big Eye. So he plays Constellar, um, Constellar M7, and he targets my Kagasuchi. I'm going to chain Hair, so I negate that. And then um, I know that he can make Big Eye right now because he has a bunch of different dragons in his graveyard. So I'm assuming he's going to go for Big Eye. I mean, making a Draco sack, if he even ran to, would do absolutely nothing because I got basically... You have to kill this card three times, or actually, no, you have to kill this motherfucker four times to get it off the board, not to mention it's bigger than your Draco sat, so, not, uh, and, and I don't know what he plans on doing with that Flameville guard either, I don't know if he's gonna, like, you know, uh, maybe he's gonna go into, like, 
I thought maybe he would go into Colossal Fighter, but I could pop Colossal Fighter with Quaylen. So, you know, um, he's in a tough posi uh, tough position, basically. Now, the one thing about this is, you know, I, I kind of have to watch what I do here because if this Kagasuchi gets taken off the board, I could potentially get OTK this turn. That's the thing about Bujin Carnation that people don't realize. Yes, it's an amazing card, but the fact that you can't use it, you know, the fact that your opponent has to have monsters and you can't have any, it means you're always walking this type rope. So anyways, he goes for Big Eye, I Valor it, and and he's like, you drew three Valors, really? And I'm like, oh, I didn't even realize I drew three Valors. Like, <laughs> I guess lucky me. I mean, I did play Pot of Duality, and I dumped a bunch of cards in my graveyard. So, you know what I mean? I don't side out three Valors if I'm playing against, um, you know, a deck where I know they can't beat me without using uh, targeting effects. And I, I tell them, I'm like, I don't care about anything in your deck except the targeting effects because... Outside of that, I could just get something like Kaiser Coliseum and just win. So he scoops it up. I don't get the satisfactory of actually winning the game. What I would have done in that situation is I would have um, I would have ran over the big eye. I would have used Quaylen on Constellar M7, and then uh, I probably just would have won from there. I, I don't think he would have had any other ways of killing my Kagasuchi. So I finally made it into the top 10 on DN. I think I'm rated 6 right now. Overall, I guess I'm like... I'm I'm one of the seven warlords of dueling network. I'm sorry, I've been I've been watching like way too much One Piece. I'm sorry. If I was a seven warlord of of dueling network, I think I would be I would be Gecko Maria. I like that guy. Thank you guys for watching as always. Sorry about the banter at the end of the video.